You need not to be familiar with all the various functions and the different names of the anatomy like the retina or the cornea. Just picture the ball down here, the eight ball down here when thinking of the eye. Hey guys, welcome to this month's tutorial. In August, we're gonna learn how to paint eyes. Learning how to draw realistic eyes is a skill that is highly sought after. So first you wanna go ahead, take out your pencil and your paper or your iPad and draw two centric circles, one big and one small. Then around the centric circles, you draw your almond shape, correct? And wham, that's how you do it, right? I assume that didn't help you. So the problem is you don't have a complete grasp of how to draw the eye. Yeah, maybe you got step by step. But in today's lesson, I'm going to actually break down the eye and explain the anatomy of the eye, how it should sit on the face in various viewpoints and some basic techniques for drawing them. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's begin with a review of the skull. The eyeball is supposed to rest in the eye socket of the skull. To find the eye socket, you can feel the rim of bone above and below your eye. This is crucial because it will tell you exactly where the eyeball is supposed to sit. Just as you see in this example here, the creepy skull from Getty Images, you can see the rim of bone surrounding the eyeball, which is located inside the eye socket. This reference is gonna be really useful for us in this lesson. Let's examine the ball on the right of the screen. When removed from its socket, the eyeball reveals a round jelly-like substance known as the eyeball. It's a common mistake for artists of treating the eye as a 2D shape, leading to an almond shape that looks flat and unrealistic. You must recognize that the eye is a sphere or a ball. The whites of the person's eyes will be lit differently because as with any sphere, there will be lights and shadows. One thing to remember is that when you look into someone's eyes, you're only looking at a fraction of the person's eyes. Due to the fact our eyelid is covering our skeleton with skin, in that sense, we can only see a fraction of the sphere. You need not to be familiar with all the various functions and the different names of the anatomy like the retina or the cornea. Just picture the ball down here, the eight ball down here, when thinking of the eye. So speaking of an eight ball, the iris and the pupil are also crucial components of the eye's anatomy. According to studies, the placement of the eight ball will help you visualize where the iris and pupil would be on the eye. So let's take a look down here to the various sketches I have. The iris, for instance, this would be the iris. Where the eight is, we actually replicate that with a tiny black dot. The tiny black dot inside the iris is known as the pupil. As you see here towards the right, you see the various different sketches I have of the eye in different angles. It can be drawn using the horizontal and vertical guidelines. The point where the two lines intersect is where I would draw in the pupil. From there, you can draw the iris. In this sense, you will be able to draw the eye in various angles just by using the horizontal and vertical guidelines. But once again, the eyeball can be drawn by locating the horizontal and the vertical guidelines. Let me show you what that is. Let's say this is a vertical guideline for a sphere, and I'll draw the horizontal line right here. From there, I sketch out the sphere for the eyeball. Now, where you place the pupil could be at any intersection. It could be here. If you draw it over here, it could be here. It could be anywhere there's an intersection, just like these images here. Always use these guidelines. This is a great drawing method that helps me to construct the eye. This will help you when it gets harder. Here, these are just some pointers that you should keep in mind so that we can go through this process smoothly. Let's begin. I like to call this one the boy in the red hood. It's pretty straightforward because we are looking at an image from face on. Always look for the angle that runs in between the eyes, which is the horizontal line or the center line that crosses in between the eyes like this. And once again, as you notice, it's a curve and it connects the inner and outer corners of the eye. This lets me know what angles the character is holding their head at. We find the center point that divides the face in half. The vertical line that divides the face in half between the nose and the eyes. Also want you to go ahead and pay attention to the space in between each eye. The distance between the eyes is about equal to the length of one eye. So I would use this to measure the distance, and as you see here, one eye is about the same as the distance in between each eye. If I were to remove this layer here, you could see how the eye would look. And here is where I would indicate the inner and outer corners of the eye. 
As you see, we place these eye markers along the inner and outermost corners of the eye. But once again, we want to think of the eye as three dimensional. So for best practice, you can go ahead and draw that ball shape that actually is sitting in the eye. We just can't see it because we can only see a peak of the eye due to the skin covering around the skeleton. However, drawing the eye like this will help you really get the form and grasp the concept of the eye as a sphere. Now, take note of the outer and innermost corners of the eye and see how it follows the eye line. This curve will also work with the eyelid. The eyelid follows this curve, curves around the sphere. Now, we're gonna to try to draw this ourselves. First, we're gonna find the center line that runs in between both eyes and the curve almost facing down, curve like this. We're gonna find the vertical line that divides the face in half. Put it right here. Doesn't have to be perfect, but do your best. Now, we're gonna look for the distance in between both eyes. And I would say about right here will indicate the distance between two eyes. And this length here is going to help us determine the length of one eye. Measure this and the same here, length of one eye. Try to draw it on the line so it does not look wonky. We don't want our drawing to look unrealistic. So we use that's why we're using guidelines. From this point, we want to draw the spheres for what? The spheres for the eyeballs. With any face, we have eyeballs, we just can't see it due to the skin covering it up. Now we can draw in the eyelid, and the eyelid just wraps around the sphere. Or the iris, as you can see on this, where you have that protrusion kind of facing up, is where you actually want to draw the circle. The eyelid is cutting off a section of, of the top part of the iris, and you can draw it down to the eye line and do the same for the other side. The bottom lid will barely touch the bottom of the iris. You can erase a little bit. The eyebrows, they kind of angled, angled uh, touching the eyes. So we're just gonna draw in the eyebrows. We kind of have a believable looking eye. We drew the center line between each eye. Then we also drew in the iris. Now we also need the pupil. Remember the pupil is just another smaller centric circle inside of the iris. Also add the little eyelid on top for the folds around the eyebrows, perfect. I like to darken the top lid of the eye. I just because I know that's where the most eyelashes are going to be. Right, let's talk about rendering the eye. So usually I'm going to identify the light source and reflect that into the whites of the eyes. As we see in the reference here, the whites of the eyes is much wider on this side in comparison to this side. And you can also see the shadow coming from this angle. So we can determine that the light is coming from this direction. Understand? touching the eye like this, actually. If you don't know what rendering is, it's basically adding color and detailing your drawing. First things first, we're gonna look for this neutral color for the whites of the eyes. I've been saying the whites of the eyes. Whites of the eyes, like you see here, they're not actually white, they're more of a neutral color. So I will go down and the value, maybe about here, should be good. Once again, the light is coming from this direction. We wanna mimic that in our drawing here. So this side is gonna be much darker than one side. And the bottom is gonna be quite lighter as well. Okay, now also, as you can see here, there is a much darker rim of shadow along the top, close to the eyelid. So we're gonna go ahead and add darker value of gray here, just along the top of the eyebrow, especially on this eye. Good. The iris is the colored pigment of the eye, which causes this eye to be this bluish green color. And I'm just gonna find a key color for it. This should be something like, oh, I think this is good. You see the highlight on this eye, and you see how dark it is at the top compared to the bottom. It's perfect. So we're gonna draw that. Let's bring it down just a little bit more. Just like that. Let me see how it looks on this eye. Just like that. And then we can indicate the pupil just a little bit more. The darkest part of the eye. Now we can draw in our highlight. And this is everybody's favorite part. Just drawing the highlight. Remember it's on top of a dome. We just draw this triangle shape. And right up here. What you can also do is, you don't have to, but for the skin, we can render around it just a bit. And I'm gonna go on with this pinkish, red, brownish, rich color. I'm just gonna brush in some paint with low opacity. 
And if you don't know how to turn the opacity down on Procreate, this, this lever right here is for the opacity. And the lower it is, the more water it has. Let's think of it as like watercolor. That's the more opacity, the more paint it has on the brush. So yeah, we got this part. Now we can add a little bit more shading, especially since the light is coming from this side, we can already see the shadow on this side of the face. So we're just gonna add some shadow and just brush in some shadow ridge here for the eyes. And it's gonna form this round shape because remember the eyeball is a sphere. The rules will still apply. The folds of the skin here, ball there. You can do the same on the other side. Don't put don't put too much darkness. You might make your character look old or very tired with a lot of bags. It just depends on the reference. Be mindful of that. You don't want your character to look like a raccoon for real. Underneath the eye, also there's a shadow here. Just blend this out a little bit. The brows, you can add some black in there. Eyebrows. I want to introduce also you can add in the tear duct around the innermost corners of the eye. The tear duct. You add a skin tone, add a shadow. Now you add a tear duct, we can also add eyelashes. For the eyelashes, remember to always add subtle strokes radiating in different directions. You never want to do it like super long like this, like this. It looks very silly even underneath this white part here would be eyelashes just a little bit and this part here this light white part would be the water line and you can add some lighter strokes in here just to show the thickness of the eye and this really helps see the difference between this eye the right eye and the left eye you can go back on this side and there is the water line you can see the water line around the eye very nice just follow the tear duct and wrap it around. Some highlights in there. If we made this a little darker, we can add some highlights. That's pretty much the eye covered in a frontal view. So now we have a reference of our image in three-fourths view. It's not the same as the last reference. Hopefully, if you can find the same reference, then try to use that. But the same method will still apply. First, we're going to look for the angle between the eyes. So the horizontal curve that runs in between the outer and innermost corners of the eye will look just like this, like this. And you can see how the curve is following the shape of the head. Since the head is tilted upwards and she's looking up, the curve is going to look almost like this, running in between the outer and innermost corners of the eye. That's the horizontal line. Next, we're going to divide the face in half with the center line from the top right down the middle, perfect. And this is gonna help determine the angle of the face. If we move the reference, we'll be able to see, oh, I drew it on the reference. If we move the reference, first let's draw it. One, two. If you can get on the first try, just keep trying, you're gonna get it. We can see the angle of the face. So we can tell that the head will be looking upwards, like so. Now, this is the eye line. This is where the eyes are actually going to sit. Whenever you have a drawing, make sure to draw on the eye line. A lot of times our eyes look crooked because we don't use guidelines. One eye may be slanting down or the other eye may be slanting upwards. It may look funny. As we move the layer on top, now we can find the length of each eye. First, find the distance between the eye, which is right here. The distance between each eye will be right here. See, the distance between each eye will be the inner corners of the eye. So I'll mark that down right here. Now we're gonna look for the outermost corners of the eye right here of the subject. And we're gonna move this layer. And as you can see, we now know where to place the eyeballs. First thing first, we look for the distance. Is it equal? We wanna make sure all three are equal in length. So the distance in between each eye is equal to the length of one eye. Remember, that's very important. So we can go back to the reference again. I want you to think of the eyes as 3D. We're gonna draw this eye socket right where the eyebrow is, this dark cave area will be the eye socket. And as we know already, the eyeball sits inside this eye socket that we can draw the eyeball right in the markers we placed here. The eyeball is 3D. Remember, we can only see a peak of the eye due to the eyelid. So this is what the eye actually looks like. Now for the eyelid, you see how the eyelid goes up and wraps around the sphere. You also want to mimic that. 
let it touch the outer corner to the inner corner. The highest point of that curve is actually where you want to draw in the iris. This is very helpful, this method helps a lot. And within the iris, you can draw in the little pupil. Pupil for this side. I like to zoom in a lot, but you can zoom in and zoom out. Boom, remove this layer. And we now have an eye. We just erase all this extra fluff. It's always important to have these guidelines. Even now you can even draw in the nose as well. And the eyebrows if need be. And the eyebrows usually just an inch above the eye. Something like that. Another thing to take notice, when you're drawing in three-fourths angle, one side of the eye is larger than the other. And it's this side. The side that's closest to the camera is larger because of perspective. So you also want to apply this to your drawing. They're not equal in length. This side is much smaller. The left side is smaller than the right side due to the fact of perspective. So we're going to try to draw this on our own. First things first, we're going to draw the angle in which the eye is sitting in. Remember the curve, it was looking up, we're gonna draw the curve. This is where the eye will sit. Now we're gonna draw the vertical guideline. So we know the angle of the face. Now we're gonna find the innermost corners of the eye, about right here and about right here. Then we're gonna find the outermost corners of the eye, right here. Remember to draw it on the curve. But once again, what side is larger? The right side. So this side is gonna be just a bit larger than the left side. Now we're gonna go ahead and draw in our spheres. Practice, once you get the grasp, you won't have to draw spheres. I don't usually draw spheres when I'm drawing because I already understand that the eye is three dimensional, but it is helpful. And the sphere is gonna kinda go where the nose would be. From there, we can find the eyelid. Now this will help us understand how the eyelid wraps around the sphere. So we're gonna draw the first round at this point right here and touches the outermost corner of this section. It's gonna wrap around and touch this corner. It's not gonna go past markers we place down. So now we can use this measurement tool. I think I may have drawn it too close to each other. So I'm just gonna push this part out just a little bit. That's perfect. And now remember that top part where the eye protrudes up here is where we're gonna draw the iris. So now we're just gonna draw the iris and the iris is gonna to touch that line it should not go below the line like this it should touch this line right here this is going to help you draw that the lower part of the eye draw this part of the eye here and connect it at this point you can even erase behind if you don't need the eyeballs right now you can erase so you can see clearly now here you can add the folds just follow the reference it will really help and now we can draw in the nose as we can see here the nose is sitting right here Kind of sitting on this plane like this. The nose. The nose kind of looks like this wedge shape. Boom. And remember the eyebrows are just an inch above the eye. So I'll just say right around here is good. And it's also going to wrap. It's going to follow the shape of the head. It's going to wrap. And follow that same angle right here. We have our eye in three-fourths angle. And this is going to be very helpful. Once you have a good sketch, your rendering stage is gonna be beautiful because if your underlying structure isn't built correctly, your foundation isn't laid down correctly, your coloring isn't gonna look good. Now we're gonna move on to the rendering stage. Alrighty, now for the rendering stage. First of all, where's the light source coming from? As you can see in this image, the light source is coming from this direction. This is the light source. It's coming from an area like this. So if the light is hitting here, we're gonna get shadow casting around this area, just like this. And this whole side, as you can see, is quite dark. We're gonna make the eyes quite neutral, neutral gray, and dark around this area, and quite dark around this area here as well. Because the whites of the eyes aren't actually white, they just appear to be white. So the left side is gonna be quite darker than the right side. And due to the fact that the eyelid we're going to even make a dark shadow that curves right below the eyelash area. This will help make your drawing look way more realistic. As you can see, there's a little white part sticking out towards the bottom. There's a light is coming from the bottom. Now we can color in the iris. I'm gonna go with a nice, let's do green color that we did blue last time. We're gonna fill in the whole eye color first. Okay, we got our green for the top. It's gonna be much darker. Because the light is coming from this direction. In area, once again, we can add some 
darkness underneath the eyes to show that it's not flat. It's a sphere. Where the eye socket would be, this is the eye socket area. And underneath the nose, there's a little darkness here. For the eyebrows, it is darkening it up a bit. This is just my process. As you can see, I've completed the eyes rendering and applied the shadows in accordance to the light's direction. Once again, the light is coming from this direction. So now with the shadows coming from the upper lid and the highlights mirroring the light's path, basically the highlight is here is mirroring where the light will be hitting right here on top of that dome. We also shaded the area around the eyes, such as the eye socket and the folds around the eyes, the facial features on the face. Uh, if we feel it's necessary, we can also go in here with a lighter color and add in the waterline for that thickness right below the iris. And if need be, we can also make add the tear duct. So if we see here, the tear duct is really dark in this sense. So we can just go in with a really dark color and put in the tear duct. This part would be pink naturally, but due to the shadows and the environment, it's giving off this really dark color. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Next, we can add some eyelashes, subtle strokes that radiate all over the eyelashes, then underneath the tear duct, you can add the little eyelashes. Doesn't have to, you don't have to overdo it. You just keep it slight, keep it simple, boom. Hey peeps, hopefully you understand these methods and you will use them in your future eye drawings and many more years of your drawing. If this did help you, please be sure to leave a comment because I will do these art instruction lessons every month. Thank you guys so much for visiting. I hope you learned a lot from my work and these tutorials. I'd like to thank all my Patreons and my supporters. Once again, I know that I can be a challenge, so just refer to this video whenever you need a refresher. Huge, huge shout out to Ergo Josh, Sam Does Arts, and Ross Draws, all the artists out there for inspiring me to make tutorials like these for you guys. I truly appreciate you, and I hope to see you in the next video. Adios.